Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the accounting for cash dividends, specifically for non-cumulative preferred stock. Now, to kick this off, first let me just do a quick kind of reminder of what the difference is between preferred stock, common stock, and, and cumulative and non-cumulative with respect to dividends. Um, first of all, preferred stockholders will get dividend distributions before common stockholders. So they have a priority claim to any dividends that a company pays out. Now, preferred dividends are often what we call cumul cumulative, which means that even if a company does not pay out in any given year, the preferred stockholders are entitled to that dividend. So basically, it's just going to keep a running deficit of how much do you owe me that you haven't paid me yet? such that once a company declares a dividend, it must pay all the dividends in arrears along with the declared dividend. So it's got to backtrack and say, how many years did we not pay these preferred shareholders? Let's go ahead and catch up and pay them for all those missed years on top of the current year. So that's the idea of a cumulative dividend. However, preferred dividends may be non-cumulative, and that's going to be the topic of this video, the ones that don't get that backlog. You get a dividend, if it's declared, and if it's not declared, you just don't get one for that year. Just as a reminder, once the preferred shareholders are paid out, any dividends declared in excess of what was owed to the preferred stockholders then get distributed to the common stockholders. All right, so let's see it. Cash dividends specifically for preferred non-cumulative stock. Assume Flyercore has 100,000 shares a 5% $2 par value preferred stock outstanding. Dividends are not cumulative and have not paid in four years. On December 31st of year five, Flyercore declares a cash dividend of $67,500. We give you the date of record, then the distribution date. Record the journal entries for the cash dividend. And in addition to simply recording the journal entries, note how much of the distribution actually winds up with preferred stockholders, versus common stockholders. So let's walk through this piece by piece. Um, first off, 100,000 shares of 5% $2 par value preferred stock outstanding. Remember, this whole problem ranges around what dividend is getting paid out. And so when we have to ask ourselves, well, what do the preferred stockholders actually get? Their stock is worth $2 par, and they are entitled to a 5% dividend on that $2 par. So if I pull out my calculator, I say $2 times 0.05 for 5%. That comes out to 10 cents. So basically, I'll, I'll just make a note of this off to the side because this, this is just calculations getting to our answer. This is not the actual answer. But preferred dividend is going to be 10 cents per share, okay? Now, it does tell us in this case that there are 100,000 shares outstanding. So we are going to multiply that times 100,000. And that means that per year, $10,000 dividend per year is what the preferred shareholders are entitled to. Every share is entitled to a 10 cent return per year because there are 100,000 shares. That is a total of $10,000 per year from the company. Now, it does tell us that these dividends are not cumulative and they have not been paid in four years. This whole piece about not being paid in four years, because these are non-cumulative, that doesn't matter. If this was cumulative, the company would actually owe those four years of dividends to those shareholders. But since it's non-cumulative, just because the company hasn't paid for four years is irrelevant. They're paying now the dividend, the, the preferred dividend holders will, the preferred stockholders will get this year's dividend. They're not going to get the dividend for the four missed years. All right. On December 31st of year five, Flyercore declares a cash dividend of $67,500. The day a company declares a dividend is the day they are officially obligated to pay it out. And so 1231, you're going to take the dividend out of retained earnings. So retained earnings gets debited for 67,500. And because this is a cash dividend that you are now obligated to pay out, this is a liability for the company, 
dividend payable $67,500. It tells us next, the date of record is January 31st. That is not an accounting date. That is simply the date that investors must hold the stock in order to get this dividend. And it tells us the distribution date is February 15th. So that's the day you're actually going to pay off the obligation. February 15th, paying off a liability, you debit the liability, dividend payable, 67500 How are you paying this one out? Well, this is a cash dividend, so cash, 67500 So we have now satisfied the first part of our uh, requirements for this problem. Record the journal entries for the cash dividend. There are the journal entries. However, we were supposed to note how much of the distribution was allocated to the preferred stockholders versus the common stockholders. We figured out over here the preferred stockholders get $10,000 in dividend per year. Therefore, this $67,500 cash payment is going to be $10,000 to the preferred stockholders, the remaining $57,500 to the common stockholders. And that's it. All right, so that's accounting for cash dividends, specifically when you're dealing with non-cumulative preferred stock. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.